Falls. Welcome, everyone. I've been off for two days. I'll explain why in a, in a, in a moment. For my two podcast listeners who are eagerly awaiting the, their daily podcast, uh, it is. I, I it, welcome to the Off Base Podcast. I'm your host. I'm the Rocky Mountain No Name Jackass. Uh, oh, the podcast carefully crafted to remind you to suck a fat one if you think you're the only one. I'm your host. I'm the Rocky Mountain No Name Jackass. It is negative fucking four degrees in the city of Aurora at 7:59 in the a.m. on February 3rd, 2022, Thursday, Thor's Day. Hammer. Yeah, we can tell you're hammered, dude. What movie? Ah, Thor. That's right. In goes the jaw. My wife's least favorite part of the podcast. All right. Ceremonial spit. And off we go. And here we go. What movie? That's right. The Dark Knight. It's all about the movie quotes today. Holy shit. It's also all about it being chilly. Oh, speaking of chili. Oh, that's right. Every other Thursday here in the winter, I will be making chili. I need to go to the commissary when I get back and get some onion and maybe some more cheese and chips. But all that being said, hey, no podcast the last two days. No podcast yesterday because uh, the snowstorm that blew through here resulted in the children having a day off from school so you know i record this thing when i'm driving back home from dropping them off at school and since they had no school i didn't drop them off and you guys didn't get the podcast so we can cry ourselves to sleep collectively tonight or maybe you did last night for my two podcast listeners that are out there the day before february 1st tuesday was my son's birthday the young lad turned a whole nine and i uh stopped after i went dropped him off i stopped at the king supas right over here to pick up a cookie cake yes that's like been our tradition since uh i can remember (laughs) is to have cookie cake with the kids on their birthdays it's just a giant cookie that's all it is. But that gets eaten so much more quickly than like if you buy any other kind of cake. Because at least for the kids, when it comes to cake, they all have like different flavors that they like. Like one of them likes chocolate. One of them likes vanilla. One of them likes whatever. Some don't eat. And it's just, the cake, it's a fucking, it just sits around. So one way to ensure that, uh, a birthday treat gets eaten is to get a fucking giant cookie cake that'll get eaten so as I went over and I got uh, cookie cake for for my son I also because I was fucking starving like I am right now I also got myself a fried chicken breast and I started yesterday's or Tuesday's podcast talking about my son's birthday turning nine blah 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 and I'm also eating the chicken breast at the same time and because I was as hungry as I was and had food in my hand, that's like where my brain was headed the whole time was f- just focusing on the food because it was freaking delicious chicken. Fried chicken is, is my my guilty pleasure. I will fucking eat fried chicken. Anytime I go to a, uh, a supermarket off base because they always, they're either making rotisserie chickens, fried chickens or both. And I will always get one of the two when I go to a grocery store off base commissary doesn't do that they don't they don't have the 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 equipment to be you know cooking up rotisserie chickens for everybody when they come in so I always take advantage of that and as I'm doing like I said the whole time my mind is on that so like the first five minutes that I was recording I'm going back and forth between like eating <laughs> and trying to have my brain figure out a topic to talk about, and there was there was nothing. 
I must have said like four times. I was like, I got nothing, guys. I'm just, I'm just chomping on food. So like after five minutes, I was like, fuck this. I'm just, gonna, I'm not gonna record a podcast today. My brain was nowhere near the capacity it should have been. My pea brain, my jackass head. Even though there's very little in it when I am doing these podcasts, there was nothing in it that day. So here we go. En route back to base. Negative fucking four degrees. My wife also, they uh, because of the snowstorm, they, they closed the base yesterday as well. So she worked from home. And she and I are both in agreement, man. It's like, we need to get the fuck out of this cold shit. We had a year in Florida, Northwest Florida, seven years in Texas. Please, Calgon, take me away. For those of you old enough to remember that commercial. Man, really, uh, and, and I, I think I mentioned this before. I grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, my wife in Chicago. We're, not, we're no strangers to snow and cold and, and horrific winters. But as you get older and you realize that you don't have to live in the place you grow up, you move to warmer climates. So it's not like we can't tough it out. It just this fucking sucks. Why would, why would you want to continue living here? Now, we love skiing, and we will we will certainly welcome snow whenever we're going skiing. But to on a day to day basis, to live through this shit, Christ Almighty. We did three years in Alaska. All right, <clears throat> and. Fun as hell. Um, because we did all kinds of, uh, of different things when we were up there. We, we skied. We went fishing. We went to see the glaciers. Blah, blah, blah. We had all kinds of shit to do up there. Um, and one of the things that, that happened to me when I was up there, and I'll never forget it, was the very first winter that we, uh, that we had up there. I went out to plow the driveway and uh, my nose hairs froze. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Froze up. When I went out this morning to start the car and to clean my car off, my nose hairs froze, and I was reminded of Alaska. Uh, so all the good memories came back of Alaska, but then all the horrible memories of the fact that I just had my nose hairs freeze <laughs> came up, and I was like, we need to get the fuck out of here, man. But we're here for another year and a half. So we will make the most of it. We do have ski trips coming up. We're going to do President's Day weekend. We're going to do a little three-day Chihuahua over there. I think I think we're going to take a day off. I think. Uh, both my wife and I. And then the kids have spring break coming up. Which we will kick the fuck out of the slopes on that day. Because there's going to be plenty of snow. When we went Thanksgiving, Christmas. Thanksgiving, only like 10% of the runs were open in Vail. Uh, Christmas probably about 50-60% but by the time we go on President's Day and um, and for spring break they're all going to be open I have to get some heat going on my fucking toes they're freezing and, uh, switch this down oh hats off to my stepson who actually wore a jacket to school today <laughs> I didn't. I don't think my stepdaughter had hers. I don't, I don't get these kids. And they, the whole the whole ride to school was focusing on the thermometer in my car. It started out we were at like negative two, and then as we started to go along, it actually went to negative I think eleven, and then it came back up to zero. And then when I dropped them off, it was down to negative four. But the whole time they kept looking at it because you know they've never seen the thermometer in my car go negative. It was freaking hysterical. The whole time they were, all three of them were commenting on it. It was great. All right, so what's on tap for today? Well, today, uh, oh, I, by the way, <laughs> I had to get a new laptop for work. Uh, I've been using a workstation, nice two big monitors been fucking fantastic uh, and a laptop I got that fucking tiny screen I can't see shit you know 47 years old 
laptops, you know, only like like this. Whereas my monitors are like, yeah, they're big. So, fortunately enough, I didn't even know this, um, but we actually have my company has an office here in Denver. So, I actually drove to pick up my laptop because the dude who was supposed to ship it to me fucked up the shipping. So I went down, I met him, I picked up my laptop, came back home, and apparently I could unplug my monitor from my, one of my monitors from my workstation and plug it into the, uh, the docking station for my laptop, but it just, it fucking, it sucks. <laughs> the screen keeps on going black, and then it comes up again, black, and it comes up again. It does that like twice every, every minute. So I have to go pick up new monitors. I was going to do it yesterday. But, you know, everything was shut down. And the, the, my IT guy, he said, uh, yeah, I didn't go into work today. <laughs> he couldn't get there. It was too fucking cold. Well, the, it was, it snow- By the way, the snow that came down, and it snowed for, I think, 26 hours straight. It was absolutely gorgeous. It really was. It's gorgeous. And it's nice to watch it from inside a house. But, man, coming out here and braving these elements, fuck that. Uh, have I said enough about it? <laughs> how, how my wife and I hate the cold and the snow. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, so at some point today, I will have to go and get my monitors. And like I said, I got to stop at the commissary. I got to get some onions and some cheese and scoops for the chili tonight. So I got a, a team meeting when I get back. And then I'll probably go pick up my monitors after the team meeting. I'll probably start cooking the chili, too at that time by three chili chili I put in jalapenos reds and poblanos and the reds and poblanos have been uh, roasted so you peel the skins off and you get that yummy flavor and luckily I have one beer left in the fridge a Samuel Adams Boston lager so I put a whole bottle of beer in the chili as well it just adds a tremendous flavor to it Really, that last batch that I made was fucking phenomenal, and I'm going to do it exactly the same way tonight. Turn my heat down just a little bit. Or turn the fan down. I'm not turning the temperature down. The temperature is on max. Because my, my toesies, my little tootsies, are warming up again. Which is nice. So I got that going for me. Which is nice. What movie? Oh! That is a rare quote. That is from Caddyshack. When Bill Murray caddied for the Dalai Lama. And the Dalai Lama told him that uh, when he dies on his deathbed, he will achieve total consciousness. Or receive total consciousness. (laughs) So I got that going for me. Which is nice. I use that quote all the time. Sometimes I forget where it comes from. It is Bill Murray Caddyshack. By the way, one of the most overrated uh, comedic actors. I I never really found that guy funny, except when he did play Carl in Caddyshack. And he was funny in in Ghostbusters, I thought. But any other movie, I haven't been a fan. Just not a fan, and that's okay. People are fans of different things. Never been a fan of Bill Murray. Alright, back to the day here. As I got sidetracked, a little stream of consciousness going on there. So, picking up the monitors, going to the commissary, and stepson and I are hitting the gym. We're in our sculpting phase. We got our push day tonight, which is focusing on chest, shoulders, and triceps. And by the way, my wife is starting to notice even more the changes that are going on in my physique. And I'm noticing them as well. Um, I really like the fact that I got back in the gym and am getting my my body in in good shape. And hopefully changing changing this, you know, for good. Making this a good lifestyle choice. Um, Interestingly enough, I have been eating a whole hell of a lot more than I was before I was working. Not a whole hell of a lot more. Maybe an extra four or five hundred calories a day. But I have not gained a single pound. In fact, I think I lost two or three. 
I'm hovering in between 185 and 190, which is still boggling my mind, the amount of food that I eat every day. Uh, like I said, I'm really hungry right now. When I get back, I'll probably have like my four eggs and my keto coffee. So four eggs, 70 calories an egg, that's 280 calories, and then my keto coffee's got about 200 calories in it. So I get about 500 calories when I get back. Then I do a snack. Uh, what I'm doing right now is an egg salad tuna, egg, egg slash tuna salad with mayonnaise. That's probably about 400 right there, three, 400. And then I'll have my chicken cabbage soup, which, which is about four or 500. So I'm at about 1500 calories before we even get to dinner. And then dinner is usually somewhere in between five and, and a thousand, depending on what I ate, or what, I, what I make and what, what, we, uh, what we end up eating. Yesterday I did ribs. And before we left Texas, and this was two years ago, there is a fabulous, fabulous barbecue place in Texas. Uh, highly recommended for anybody who hits the Texas area, because it's not just in San Antonio. It's, it's, it's a, in many places around Central Texas. It's called Rudy's. Rudy's has the best fucking barbecue, man. Uh, they use this very specific rub on their their baby bags and I don't know what they use on their brisket I think nothing I think they just let the brisket do the talking which is nice <laughs> but they use a this fabulous rub on their baby backs and they use this great rub on their chicken as well and before we left two years ago I bought a whole uh, I bought a bunch I think it was six each of the baby back rub and the chicken rub. And I think I've only used uh, two of each <laughs> in the past two years. And I make ribs and chicken all the time. But I did the ribs yesterday with Rudy's rub. And man, it was just fucking, it was fucking phenomenal. I put it in the oven. And here's a, here's a nice trick for you guys to remember. Easy way to remember how to cook ribs. You, uh, after you put the marinade on, whatever marinade you choose to put on, doesn't matter what it is. It can be Rudy's Rub, it can be um, any type of barbecue. <laughs> barbecue sauce, oh, excuse me. A burping and yawning at the same time. And however long you want to marinate it for, dry rub. Um, then you just, you put it on a rack with some white wine and chicken stock on the bottom to let to let that steam up and flavor the ribs. Tent it with aluminum foil, cover it with aluminum foil, and put it in the oven at 225 for 225. That that formula works phenomenally well. 225 for two hours and 25 minutes. And then it, you know you just stick them under the broiler or put them on your grill to get the the final put the final touches on them. And they were really, really good last night. I end up making a slaw to go with mine, a little cabbage slaw. And my wife did uh, some au gratin potatoes. So it's really, really nice dinner that we had last night. Tonight, like I said, we're doing the chili. We were supposed to have people over, and I was going to be able to cook for the, the third time since we got here. And I used to, like I said on a podcast before, I used to do it all the time. Like maybe twice a month, we'd have people over, anywhere between six and 12 people over for dinner. And I make multi-course meals. And I was getting all excited to do it. And one of the families, their kid came down with COVID, so they can't come. And then the other family, we texted them. We were like, hey, the only reason why we're doing Friday night was because, uh, you know, the other couple couldn't make it on Saturday. And they were like, uh, you guys want to make it Saturday? And they are like, ah, we got some shit going on. So we rain-checked the whole fucking thing. And that's the worst part about, about COVID is the number of rain checks that we've written since this fucking pandemic started. We just don't get the social interaction with people anymore. It sucks. But I'm still going to make uh, what I was going to make. I'm going to make it for my wife on Saturday night, which is this homemade gnocchi with a gorgonzola cream sauce. Oh, it's going to be awesome. And I serve that with filet mignon. Filet mignon. And it's going to be delicious. So yeah, back to the, to my specific diet. My diet's been going great. Body's changing. 
Can't wait to get rid of the gut when we enter phase four in the uh, May time frame. And uh, tonight's going to be the push routine, chest, shoulders, and tries. So on chest, we're doing benches and then in, and then a, a, a fly to get that nice stretch across the pecs, buddy. And uh, shoulder-wise, we'll be doing shoulder presses and clean and jerks as well. And for triceps, what are we doing? We're doing dips and uh, tricep uh, push-downs. Well, is it push or pull? I think it's a pull. Even though it's a push routine. Yeah, I guess we're pushing towards the floor. Or is that a pull? Can't really tell. <laughs> But anyway, in between the, the exercises, we'll be doing abs. Um, and the abs that we're doing, Stepson and I did the Air Force fit, fit test two weeks ago, and you have to try to get a maximum number of sit-ups, uh, maximum number of push-ups in a minute, maximum sit-ups in a minute, and then get a good time for running a mile and a half. Uh, well, I did my push-ups, I maxed out on that, but my sit-ups fucking sucked. So in order to get my midsection uh, nice and strong again, what we're doing is three sets of, instead of a minute, like on the Air Force test, we're doing 30 seconds because we're doing three sets of them. Three sets to see how many sit-ups that you can get in 30 seconds. And my stepson, is, he's, he's crushing it. Me, I'm not. <laughs> the first time we did it on the third set, I had to stop because I got, I got too tired. My abs got too tired. But uh, this last time that we that we did it, we did it on Monday. I powered through, so I was excited about that. And today we will be doing sit-ups again today. So we'll see, we'll see if I continue to strengthen the abdominal area over there. Because my wife likes the abs, you know. Who doesn't? It's a sexy fucking thing to have nice abs. So I'm going for it. Uh, very interestingly, after all that fucking snow, there is not a cloud in the sky right now. And my stepdaughter noticed that as we were approaching school. She was like, oh my God, there's there's no clouds in the sky. I'm like, yeah. So it really is a pretty nice morning. The sun is not as low as it has been as we continue extending the length of the days. Getting closer to the spring solstice. Ah, oh, look at that. Coming over this ridge now. Seeing the Rocky Mountains, everybody. It's a hell of a sight, I tell you. The tippy tops, of course, are white. And now a lot of the mountains in the foreground are starting to, to show snow on them. Very, very pretty. But do I want to keep living here? Hell no. Oh my God, am I hungry? Turn it in, people. Turn it in. Talked to my parents for a little bit yesterday. They called to uh, wish my son a happy birthday. They were they felt horrible. They had forgotten to call him on Tuesday to wish him a happy birthday. So they did it last night. And he loves seeing his, his grandparents, his busha and his jaja. Polish for uh, grandmother and grandfather. Which is what I look forward to, to becoming one day. Because the grandparents get to choose what the grandchildren call them. And I am without a doubt choosing jaja. I can't wait to be a jaja. To have uh, grandchildren of our own. It's funny too because it, well, who was it? My stepdaughter yesterday was talking to my wife, talking about how they wanted she wanted a, a little sister, and then my son also said, "Yeah, I want a little, a little sister too. I don't want to be the youngest." And my wife, she's forty nine, I'm forty seven, and she's like, "Yeah, we're not. No." <laughs> she's like, "The baby making machine is closed for business." <laughs> because uh, I don't know if I mentioned this on a prior podcast, but when she was pregnant with my son. I was 38, yes, and she was 40, and to have a child at 40, oh my God, oh, there's Moto, I'm going to Moto, switching lanes here, 
But yeah, she was she was 40 years old, and that, her, the pregnancy that she went through was just horrific. Everything on her swelled up like it had never swelled up on the prior two pregnancies. She, and she'd have to put on these compression pads on her on her um, outer extremity limbs. I don't know how to say that, but on her on her calves and on her forearms. And I always used to say that she, she by, by the time she got everything on, she looked like Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad for her. So yeah, there's there's no way that we're we are having another child age wise, and just the, the risk of of uh, bad health to the child. I don't know how else to say that. Sorry, that's a jackass way of saying it. Oh, my window's not going down, so I got to open my door. Moto, I gotta open my door because my window's not rolling it's, down. It's been happening all day long. You got me? <laughs> You're good, motivated. You stay warm. <laughs> all all right, right, be bro. careful up, up on that truck. You better back up. But he's gonna be on that side, though. We'll do. Thanks, Thanks sir. Yeah, he called me motivated. I gotta credit this guy for me turning a lot of my uh, psychology around since we got to Colorado. I had horrible psychology. Uh, here in my upper 40s as we try to to figure out how we're going to live the second half of our lives together, uh, particularly me and my wife. She's she's ready to retire, man. She really is. She wants to get out of this cold climate. Um, she has achieved what she's wanted to achieve in the military, which is the rank of colonel. And now we need to uh, find uh, motivation for for the second half, for the downhill run. See how we do. All right, we're back on base. My man, Motivator, it was great to see him. I'm just gonna wait for that excellent view of Denver in the foreground with the Rockies in the background. And there it is. Nice one, everybody, nice one. So I'm gonna sign off for today. I hope everybody's got a great Thursday. Stay motivated as uh, Modo just told you. And I will smell you tomorrow.